Welcome back, this is the Clay Golem once again. Uh, we're back in Foundry and you probably recognise this is Seagrove Caves. Uh, so in this video I'm just going to continue what I was doing before, um, which is updating with some of the changes to 3.0, uh, updating our journals and things like that. So again, probably not a uh, particularly exciting one for you guys. Um, nothing particularly new here that we haven't done in other videos. But of course you're welcome to join me as I do really exciting stuff. Okay, so... Uh, as usual, I've got the model open in my other window, uh, so I can reference that. And first thing I want to do is, in my Stormwreck Isle here, uh, I've got my Seagrow Caves, and this is where we put out all of these little journal entries. And we did for a couple of these, if you remember, we put in the descriptions and the info and things, but we know that's not the best way to do it anymore. So we're going to get rid of the entrance tunnel. Right click, delete do that way get rid of the fungus farm and the larder and the circle chamber we're just going to basically redo all of these in using the new journal uh, which is yeah it's a bit better uh, got a couple of duplicates here let's just get rid of them and delete now it's going to leave these journal entries here that say unknown um, because of map pinned rather because they were attached to journals so we get rid of all of these uh, fungus farm those ones have kept for whatever reason uh, all right so we've got no journal entries there we don't want to look at that one uh, just make sure we haven't so we did clifftop observatory um, we haven't done the compass rows we did dragon's rest so we did dragon's rest one big bit so we're going to do this like this as well um, and then we'll do the others um, and for yeah and the same we did intro and the arrival beach okay so seagrow caves da 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 uh, how do we go about doing this <laughs> how did we do it did we do create a new journal and do it that way uh, in seagrow caves um Oh, look, I'm all over the place. I should have uh, checked this before we did it. So what did we do before? For Clifftop Observatory, we just called it Clifftop Observatory. And then we created those map pins from there. So let's create a new journal entry. We're going to put it in Seagrow Caves. And we're going to call it Seagrow Caves. Okay. All right. And then, of course, let's add the page that we want. And we want to add a map location. All right. So... Uh, overview of the Seagrow Caves, blah, 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 blah. Do I want any basic stuff? I might do, actually. I might put some of the basic stuff in here. Um, but for this map location that I've started here, scrolling through the thing, we're going to start. This is going to be the entrance tunnel. Of course it is. Again, it's not the fact I can't spell. It's the fact I can't type, which is not necessarily any better. Okay, so we're going to pop that in. That's what we're going to read out. So we're going to make it bold. I'm going to put a line under it. Thank you. Um, then I'm going to put the bit of writing in here. Oh, now I have to remember that if I copy and paste different paragraphs at the same time, it won't um, wrap properly. So I need to do each paragraph separately, which is fine. That's not a problem. It's certainly easier than then copying and pasting it, trying to sort out the wrapping. All right. So uh, let's just can't get that. <laughs> Why can't I get that? A. Eh? OK, let's get rid of all of that. So uh, at high tide, the tunnel was flooded. So visitors broach da, 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 area B2. Let's make that bold just so it stands out. In fact, actually, we might be up. Oh, I don't think we did that before. Dragging other area names into here. We'll have a look at that later. Uh, Spore Servant Octopus. So what we can do is we can go back to our monsters. Where was our Spore Servant Octopus? And I think we could drop that in there, couldn't we? Da 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 Get rid of that. Uh, and attacks any other creature apart from Mykonoids who enter it. Before the leader lapsed into conscious... 
uh, it created the Guardian. Right, description on the previous page, water level here rises, etc, etc, etc. Not particularly interesting, that's pretty much it. So, yep, we've got our link here to the Spore Servant Octopus. Great. Uh, let's call, let's, um, let's do the intro. Let's add a page, text, intro for this, just text. So I'm going to copy the information again. I want to be able to effectively, if I wanted to, run this whole thing without opening the module. Uh, why? Just because it's all in one place. Why not? Proof of concept more than anything else. So just exciting copy and paste. Really dull for you guys, but there we go. It's not actually very exciting for me. No way, you don't want to do that. Very exciting for me either, to be fair. Okay, so let's get rid of that. Da, 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 talk about the caves. Da, 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 da. No particular links or anything in there. Uh, that's all fine. Running this chapter by boat along the coast. Uh, approach at sea level. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to close that. I'm going to add a new page of text called approach. So I'm going to put in Ah, yes, because it wants to do that. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to type it. So approach at sea level. I'm then going to put a line. Then I'm going to put... from above uh, my ability to copy and paste and use my fingers is terrible sometimes so I'm gonna make that bold as a little header I'm gonna make that bold as a little header put that under there uh, and then I'm just going to put entering caves Again, I should have read all of this before I get anywhere near running this module, and I should have a pretty good idea. Um, but if I need it as a quick reference, it's right here. Okay, so if 40 foot this this is a bit I want to check. It's something I want to check. So uh, <laughs> entrance tunnel. What I didn't do on the entrance tunnel. Edit the entrance tunnel. What area was that? That is area B1. So I need to put that in the top here, don't I? B1. Okay, that's in. Good. Now I can drag this into here. There we go. There's our our token there. All right, so in the intro, it doesn't refer to anywhere. In approach, it talks about area B1. So this is what I wanted to try. Can I, for this bit, Instead of that area B1, can I drag this in instead? I believe so. Yes, I can. Uh, is that right? Yeah, look, there we go. Entrance tunnel is flooded all the way to area B2. So I haven't got B2 yet, but I'm going to do that. Um, which is not shown on the map of Seagrow Caves. I don't need to have that. So I've got that map right in front of me. There we go. All right, so we'll come back and do B2 in a second. Why am I doing this? Why not? Okay, so intro, approach, entrance tunnel, add a page. This is going to be B2, which is the fungus farm. Fungus farm, this is a map location. Create that. This is B2. Brilliant. We'll do our description, slap that in there, put our line in, make that bold. That's not how you spell sulfur. Thank you. I'm not sure if that's an Americanism or what, but it's just not right. <laughs> uh, the water, waterfall is fed. So, right, we're going to stick these bits in here. Copy pasty. It's 
stick that bit in. And then we've got potentially another bit of text here, which is to be read out. So I'm going to make that bold. All right, so it talks about area B3. It talks about the sprouts, violet fungi. Uh, I'm not too worried about the sprouts, but the violet fungi, I'm definitely going to bring that in because violet fungi is hostile. Well, you know what I mean. Okay, just close that. Make sure we're happy with how that looks. Myconoid sprouts, myconoid adults. Uh, let's do it for the sake of it. Where is my myconoid sprout? And drop you in there. And myconoid adult. Come on, brain. Do myconoid adults. And because we've got some names here, I am going to bold these names so they're easier to see when I'm scan reading it later. Let's close and see how that is. There we go. So we've got our links to Myconoid Sprout with our names. Uh, we've got the adults with their names. We've got the violet fungus in there. What I do like about it is the fact that I can click on that and it brings up the violet fungus. That I really do like. Okay. Um, so we've then got, <coughs> excuse me, we've got a bit more I need to add on to here. So I'm going to put a line under this. Um, it talks about running the combat. Da, 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 da. What's more important is the bit that talks about the what the myconoids do. If the characters defeat the fungus, one would hope they do. Um, copy this one in. Uh, and then we've got bit of treasure in here okay so in there I'm gonna put another line all right so <clears throat> excuse me let's get rid of some of that so the myconoid sprouts avoid the characters and the violet fungi if the adults become aware of danger through the noise of combat uh, I was updating it over here which is great uh, it's a bit small though isn't it probably for you guys uh, if the characters defeat the fungi, the Myconoid's attitude improves to indifferent, blah, 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 blah. Uh, they're willing to speak using their rapport spores. Which is there. Let's just bold that. Distress spores. I didn't bold the four spores. Thank you. Uh, the adults agree to accompany the characters and vouch for them with the rest of the Myconoid colony improving the myconoids attitude to indifferent as well blighted fungi Boom. so because that's kind of a different thing i'm going to put another line under that which is good so a character who examines any of the fungi no because notices a lot of the mushrooms are sickly shriveled and blotched with black patches of decay the blight has no obvious source we know what it is or we will do anyway if you you don't know i do Okay, um, let's pop in our treasure here. Uh, the fungus farm heart cap mushrooms. I remember, we already had some du -du 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 heart cap mushrooms, and they are ready to harvest. Okay, a character who spends 15 minutes searching for this fungi. Succeeds on A. Right, we can put a skill check in. Skill. Ability equals intelligence. Skill equals nature. Oh, it's already got DC 12 written there. Uh, so, or a Skill ability equal equals wisdom. Skill 
equals survival. Oops. Uh, that was also a D6, wasn't it? DC. D, did I say D66? 12, rather. Finds 1D6 of these reddish mushrooms with its bear. Right. Tarak. Again, a bit of overkill. I really don't need to be going with this overboard, but it's really useful to see what we can choose to do with some of this stuff. All right. How does that look? So we've got, uh, yep, we haven't got B3. We can put that in a moment. Distress spores, blighted fungi, treasure, uh, heart cap mushrooms ready for harvest. Characters that spends 15 minutes and succeeds on a DC 12 intelligence nature check or a DC 12 wisdom survival check. Finds 1d6 of these. Uh, cool. I like that. Uh, one thing I do want to see if we can do is for the whole of this is not set the can I set the it's bulleted list numbered list clear the formatting from all of it it's all good now it's all the same but what I wanted to do really was make the font a bit bigger that's just going to make it all Hmm. Do you see what I mean? Because it's quite small on screen, especially for you guys. Let's make it all heading three. Bleah. That's really blocky. That's really horrible to read. I mean, all the links and everything are there. But I don't like it. And heading four is... Heading four is a bit better, I think. Let's do that. Okay. Right. I'll close the journal. Da, 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 da. Sea grove. Right, let's close these other ones. Get rid of Cliff Top. Get rid of Dragon's Rest. Get rid of the introduction. Sea groves. Here we are. Okay. Now that's interesting. I didn't realise, as I, because I've put in putting these lines in, it actually breaks these up as well. Oh, it hasn't on that one. Why is it done on this one? Water. Oh, it's because that, yeah, it's because I changed the font to say that it was subheadings. Uh, to re. Hang on. Because I changed the whole lot to be heading three, which makes it look bigger, but it puts it. That's something really useful to know. There we go. We learned something else we didn't know before. <laughs> Is by putting in those. Uh, by changing that font, it's actually giving us headings for each of those sections, but they're. It's it's not really what we want to be honest. It's not what we want. Don't want it to be headings at all. Can I just make it a normal paragraph? Yeah, I've I've kind of made it ugly now. Or uglier, perhaps. Clear all formatting. I still want that bit to be bold. Oh, what the hell's missing from here? Why have I got two line gap? I mean, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but it's just a bit worrying that now I've got a two line gap. Right. And it hasn't... It's strange, isn't it? Because these other lines... Kind of aren't included. Oh, I see. That's the line I want. Oh, I see. Yeah, right, this reddish line. Okay. Blimey. It's just real basic editor and I'm having trouble with it. So this red line is just showing that that's the end of that block of stuff. Um, it's these pale ones here. There we go. Okay. All right. So we've got the entrance tunnel. Uh, we've got the fungus farm itself. I'm not going to mess with the font anymore for any of the rest of these because that's going to drive me slightly nuts. Um, so in the approach, talked about area B2. Um, so if I edit this, 
I can now bake, take B2 and drop it in there. Again, I really don't need to do that. I am, because I can. Uh, so the entrance tunnel, fungus farm. There we go. All right. Gosh, how uh, how exciting for you guys watching this. So we want to do another map location. This one is the larder. Should go a bit quicker now because I'm not going to mess around with some of those other silly bits. Slap that in. All bold. Off the end here. Da, 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 da. Myconoid sprouts, area B2, B3. Uh, I'm just going to clear those. That's it. That's all I'm doing. Right, what I do need to do. Yep. Come on down here. Shrink this slightly. Uh, what I do need to do is to say that this is the fungus farm and drop my t um, map pin in there. I need to drop my larder in over here. Now, it's done that. Look, it's given us a, a thing. The reason why is because when I was in the larder, I forgot to give it a B3. So by giving it a B3, that's what changes the icon to be the one we want. Ta-da! Okay, so this is the circle chamber. Map location, create another one. We've got six clusters of giant mushrooms. We're going to make that bold. Um, and we then got our description. Put my line in. Under the line, we're going to put that. And I'm going to remove that. I've done it again, haven't I? This is B4. Thank you. Slap it right in the middle. Job done. Easy peasy. Now, there's no skill checks in that area. Uh, there wasn't any skill checks in the one. Oh, hang on. Uh, da, 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 da. In the larder. There is. Just here. Characters can identify with a successful uh, intelligence. So this is a skill check. Uh, a Ability equals intelligence, skill equals nature, DC 15. Check. Da, 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 da. The character moves more than five feet into the chamber, the six sturges. So I am going to chuck the sturges in there. Do, do, do. Close. There we go. So we've got a D DC 15 nature check in there. Um, and we've got our sturges. Okay, that's better. Happy with that. Uh, circle chamber. There was no checks done. Uh, there was none in there. Um, there was none in the approach. No, good. All right. Uh, so the next one we want to do, add another page. We're going to add another map location. This is... Senensa's Sanctum, which is nice and alliterative. Copy paste. Make that nice and bold. Stick in our line. Copy these bits in. And we can pop our treasure there. All right, so we want to take these bits. Want to remove all of that. Okay, tend to the unconscious myconoid who leads them. Senensa. So am I going to grab Senensa? Just in case I need her stats. Give it another S at the beginning. The adults collect spores from the barrel-sized glowing red fungus that vaguely resembles a human brain and puff of spores around the leader's head. Treatment is keeping them alive for now. Okay. Treasure. 
Da, da, da. If the character brings the glowing red fungus called the Ruby Morale. So that's one of our items. Let's dump that in there. Back to the cloister, Tarak. Uses it to make them an elixir of health. Uh, I didn't create an elixir health, which is fine. It's described in Appendix A. That's fine. Uh, I'll probably just make that a potion of healing or something like that. Okay. Oh, I've done it again. Uh, so this is B5. B5. It's because that bit's new. It's not that new. <laughs> That whole hour-long video on it <laughs> a few days ago. <sighs> Poor. Okay, so we've got a few things in there. Lovely jubbly, nice and easy. Uh, now we get to the crystal cave. This is where the, the big action happens in this scene. So this is the crystal cave. It is a map location. There we go. Gonna do it first this time. B6 crystal cave. And we want to copy and paste the description blurby bit that we're going to read out and make that bold. Uh, then we're going to talk about what happens here. Again, before running this, I would know all of this, um, whether I've read it directly from the module or come in here to read the diary. Um, I always want to be prepared um, and have a good idea where the characters are likely to go and what they are likely to encounter uh, especially when it's you know sort of key parts of the adventure because if you get it wrong it can be dif not difficult it can be challenging to get the characters back on track without feeling like you're railroading them so being prepared you can adapt much much better okay so I want to put in a line under there uh, and then we've got this thing about the fire crystal. So let's drop, drop this in. Uh, and then it talks about breaking them. I'm going to come back and do all the next editing in a minute. We're going to put another line in. Let's make this a bit bigger. We've got another line in here. And then it's we. That was me copying and pasting badly on the other screen, by the way. And we're going to pop that in there. Okay, so I want to take out all of the current formatting. Thank you very much. Uh, treasure, I want that to be a bold word. So 25 tiny chunks of obsidian worth 10 gold pieces each. I created a obsidian chunk tiny. Why? <laughs> because I was playing with items. Uh, <laughs> I was playing with items and... and let me, let me just close that for a second. So I created Obsidian Chunk Tiny, and if I open it up, you can see I've put, just on the left here, that this worth 10 gold pieces. Uh, did I put a description in it? No. Um, but what I wanted to do was, when we were looking at um, using the encounter groups to distribute wealth, um, I was looking at, oh, well, if I create the items, I can do that. Now, do I want to do that for every single item? No, I did it for a whole bunch of stuff through here, just playing with creating items to see what it would look like. Um, but obviously, you it could get absolutely ridiculous. You know, all different sizes of obsidian chunks and, you know, um, gold hoop earrings, silver hoop earrings, gold drop earrings, silver drop earrings. You know, it just could go on and on and on. Um, so, uh, yeah, it, it's a bit of overkill, but I did it just for practice really okay so back to what we're actually doing this talks about two fume drakes let's take our fume drakes Oop. drop that in up there dropped it right in the middle of the word of course uh, lurking the sulfurous fumes <sighs> sulfurous Uh, da, 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 they don't leave this cave. Source of light from my Canoy colony. Explore the cave. Blah, 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 blah. Heart of the problem uh, is the tomb of the red dragon. That's potentially important name. 
Um, Because you know they're going to ask what the name of something is and you have to kind of come back to a different scene and try and have a quick look at the journal and it's like, where is it? So bolding those makes it much, much easier to see those. So I'd like to do that with names. Um, Just makes my life easier. Um, And my brain doesn't always remember them at the time. Uh, elemental plane of fire, another dimension of reality, cosmic, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, exciting stuff. Okay, so this crystal then. Destroying the orange crystal. Uh, noxious fumes escape the cave, which is great. A single strong whack uh, will break it. When the crystal breaks, a two foot diameter sphere of smoldering obsidian tumbles to the floor, breaks open, releases a fire snake. I always manage to drop it in the middle of the word, don't I? Fire snake from its stony egg. Seeing the character as the only fuel, it attacks them at once. Brilliant. Breaking the crystal also reveals the reason the myconoids avoid this cave. The cave is immediately filled with shimmering sunlight refracted through the crystal uh, that vent, uh, that line the vent. Bright light fills the entire area. Now that's something I hadn't taken in account of, and this is why doing this is actually really, really useful. When they break that, I have got yeah, my monster appears. Um, let me just close these for a second. So I've got a couple of lights here, and the idea when they break that crystal, I turn that light off. But actually, breaking that crystal, it's saying about more light flooding in. So I really need to add. A different light on here one that we haven't had before um, I want to make it a white light Let's update that oh that's intense isn't it <laughs> let's turn down that intensity a bit how's that if I turn off that one so turn that one off so it's like that, and it switches over. I think that's doable. I think that's still a little bit too intense. Because I've made it white, of course. Yeah, that's better. And I don't want it extending too far out into their cave, or otherwise that won't make an awful lot of sense. Okay, right, good. So reading the uh, the module, who would have thought it's actually quite useful? Okay, so breaking the fire crystal also reveals the reason the myconoids avoid this cave. The cave is immediately filled with shimmering sunlight, refracted. So, shimmering sunlight. Light animation. Mm, bewitching wave. Ooh. That could work. No. No. Nope. Oh, can't use fairy lights again. Flickering light. No. Hell no. Yeah, could do. I'm still sitting with bewitching wave at the moment. No, oh, not that. Light dome. That's not bad. It's a little bit too close to what we had. Mysterious emanations. No, don't want to pulse it. Definitely not. Don't want to. Not a lighthouse. Nope. Don't. Want <laughs> Whoa, no. I mean, you could and slow it right down. I'm going to stick with bewitching wave. That will do. But we want that one on first. Okay. Whew. Little segue. All right. Through the shimmer light refracted through the crystal that line the vent. Bright light fills this entire area. Okay. Snake egg breaks into 25 obsidian chunks. Good. Right. Are we happy with that? Have I actually dumped the map location on there? No, of course I haven't. I have now. Good. Right. Anything else we need to put on here? Um... No, I think we're done. Woohoo! Okay, so that's three grow caves. Uh, what's next? Um, the next one is Cursed Shipwreck, of course, the Compass Rose. Now, again, uh, let's 
let's actually go to the comp give me my scenes let's go to the compass road rose over here now game so we've got all our old journal things in here so we want to potentially get rid of those uh, and replace them so as, as annoying as it is because i put all that work into them <laughs> that's a lie isn't it uh, i put a little bit of work into them for this one i just chucked them down as map bins there wasn't a lot of work done in t at all Right, get rid of all of those locations now that is the wreck of the compass rose which we can use as the main one and there's the captain's journal um finding the journal award 400 xp uh staff of defense oh yes this is when we were just playing with them and i put rubies and treasure and all sorts of things on there um okay i'm going to edit this to start with and i'm going to get rid of that okay so I still want them to get a reward for finding the captain's journal and I like the idea of having this as a separate journal item because at the top here I can go show players. Uh, don't need to show, I can make them observer for example. All players, bam. All players, it says showed the contents of the captain's journal to selected players and I said all players. So I, they can read it. I'm happy for them to read that. I don't need to read everything out to them, that's good. Uh, damn it, now it's shared. Uh, show players. None. All players, none. Good, right. Showed the con. I didn't show it. I Hopefully I've hidden it again. Show players. All players, no change. None. It's okay, so it keeps saying it showed the content, but it shouldn't be able to see that. We can, again, we can log in as somebody and just check those things later but to be honest if they're looking in that journal and they go oh what's this and you go, oh hang on a minute you're not supposed to see that yet there's nothing in there that's going to wreck it um and we'll just be able to learn from that little mistake should we have one okay the record of compass rose here it is um we need to uh add a page Great, this is just the intro part. So this is going to be just a pretty much a straight copy and paste job. Bit of background. Necessary? No. Fun? No. No, I feel like I've started doing it this way, so I kind of feel like I have to finish now. Okay, let's get rid of all of those things. Okay, right. Da, 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 da. Uh, running this chapter. Okay. So, uh, the Dragon's Rest has a rowboat the characters can take to visit the wreck. Uh, the trip of two and a half miles takes about an hour and 40 minutes to row. When the characters arrive, read this text. So, copy and paste. I'm going to put my line in to help differentiate my different sections and I'm going to make that bold. Okay. Uh, okay, happy with that. Good. All right, now the locations themselves. So add a map location. This is the main deck, which is called C1. Good old copy and paste again. Now this is again the read out description part. I'm going to put our line in for the rest of the stuff. Make this stuff bold, which is good. Come on down there, thank you. Uh, crow's nest. Get rid of that. Bold that bit as a little sub heading. Rope ladder, da da da, 50 feet. Uh, okay, basket shape, stuff with blah, 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 bits of dry bones and stuff like that. Okay, so that's all just about the harpy's nest. Um, 
What we can do though is also add on under here about the harpy's return. Now we know about the harpy's return, that's why we've got the harpy already on the map. And it's quite useful having it already on the map because it will remind us about it. So when they arrive at the shipwreck, da 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 da. Okay. Oh, all right, so that's just talking about later on. Um, but what we can do is take this section here. And say just in case they decide to go climbing about, we can. We already know what the treasure is going to be. And again, we can add that in to make sure that's in the encounter for easy distribution. Uh, so what's this where I've generated stupid stuff? Uh, a small gold bracelet. Worth 25 GP, that's already in there. A single gold hoop earring. Worth 25. Two small tiger eye. And a bloodstone gem. See again in this instance, completely, uh, completely, not I could say pointless. Pointless might be too much. Um, but again, we can just see how it works. You know, we've got gold bracelet, right? Okay, I can see gold bracelet. Um, in fact, just hovering over it, it says gold bracelet, it tells me it's 25 gold, gold hoop earring, tiger eye bloodstone but what it also means is when I add it to the encounter and I distribute that they can tell me who's getting what or they can just leave it in party loot or you know especially when the party gets back a holding they're going to probably just chuck everything in there and distribute it later when they have a long rest or something like that so I'm fine with that okay so main deck of course is over here Boom, there we go I remembered I'm learning. I'm not. I'm really not. Okay, so now we need to do um, forecastle. I think it is. Yep. So forecastle, which is going to be uh, didn't do it as a map note. Uh, edit. No. Okay. Delete. Go away. Add for castle not as text as a map location thank you uh, so this is c2 uh, there's very little going on here copy paste make it bold dump that over here for the forecastle save Get rid of this old map note that's not going to work anymore. And that one. 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 Okay, good. Right, we've got a forecastle. Add page. Uh, quarter deck. Map location. Create that again. This is going to be C3. Um, I don't think there's an awful lot going on here. Paste, make it bold. Uh, there's a little bit of description, so not description, a little bit of information about the wheel bears the name of the ship, blah, 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 blah. And what happens if they make an awful lot of noise. So, um, wheel bears the name of the ship, the compass rose, engraved, mother of pearl. Da, 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 da. If the character turns the wheel, snaps it off his axle. If the character tries to attach the wheel before it hits the deck, must make A. Oh, okay. Uh, so this is a dexterity throw. So what was this? This was save. <laughs> I can't remember how to do this one. <laughs> um, I need to just check. Please hold. Um, in the video we did on journal updates, I put in the description. Uh, if you haven't seen that, by the way, go and have a look. In the description for the journal update tips video, I put the shortcuts for all of these things because um, I knew nobody would remember what they are. So it is save dexterity uh, and then just the number. 
I don't need the word 10 in there. It literally is slash save dexterity 10. Okay, on a successful save, they catch the wheel. On a failed save, it's with a loud thud. Um, da, da, da. A moment later, it's answered by... Right, okay. Bosh. So let's just check quarter deck. Yep, that deck save is in there. Uh, clicking on that oh, it won't let me do anything because I haven't got somebody selected. Now if I've got them selected, dexterity check. Straight away, it's asking for that. I can make that roll for that character uh, and there we go flat six for them good right quarter deck um, bosh pop that out over there good okay well i'm glad i put that stuff in that description I have to remember what they are okay the captain's quarters then which one's the captain's quarters i think that's the one with the zombies isn't it uh, so this is the captain's quarters this one here so add Captain's quarters, make sure it's a map location, create that, um, and it is C4. Right, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, because I'm, I'm a bit of an idiot, I'm going to create these map locations. Um, so 5, 6, 7. So 5 is the. <laughs> I told you, a bit of an idiot. Galley. Okay, and that's C5, which is down here. Thank you. And then we want crew quarters, map location, create that. That's C6. Crew quarters is this one up here. Bosh. And then we got the mess hall as well. Map pin Bosch, uh, and that is C7. Can I count? Yes, I can. Brilliant. All right, so we'll slap that in there. Uh, so, right, I've got those now. Now I can just do the copy and pasty bit a bit easier. All right, so the captain's quarters, uh, edit that. Copy and paste the main. Didn't want to do that. Did not want to do that. Let's try copying and pasting like a proper human being. Proper human being. When I grow up, maybe one day. Proper human being. Okay, we'll put our line in. Uh, we've got a bit of a description. Uh, and it talks about the fact that there is this hole in here. And we've also got a bit of treasure. Our treasure. Okay, let's get rid of that formatting. If characters drop the wheel in area C3 uh, or need more than one strength check, there are two zombies are beside the door. So let's make sure we've got our zombies in here because it stands out that there are monsters uh, beside the door. Otherwise, they are aimlessly wandering around. Hole to the hold. Again, nice and alliterative. I'm going to pop a line in there. Okay, the hole beside it. Uh, rotting boards, collapse under weight of the chest. It broke through the floor to the lower deck, etc. Okay, good. We don't need to put any rolls or anything in there, which is fine. Treasure. Two small drawers. Pouch containing 50 gold, a set of cartographer's tools. Did I create cartographer's tools? I did not create cartographer's tools. Oh, cartographer's tools is a thing anyway, isn't it? Um, let's have a look. Can I drag straight from the SRD? Yeah, I can. So why am I doing that? Who knows? I don't know. Don't ask silly questions. <laughs> uh, and, oh, under items, dagger. And just a dagger. And 
Oops. A dagger. The compass set in the desk can easily be freed. Now, I don't think I created the compass, did I? Uh, ship's compass, I bloody well did. So the ship's compass set. There we go. So again, if they do, so I can add that to the encounter treasure. Um, Easy peasy. Right, let's close that. Let's check how this looks. We've got our description. We've got the fact that there's zombies. Uh, we've got about the hole. Two small drawers in the desk tain, 50 gold, cartographer's tools, a dagger, and the ship's compass. Brilliant. So, yeah, if a, if a character comes by, let's uh, close our monsters. Who have we got? Who have we got on here? We've got, um, we've got our test character. Here she is. At the moment, we look at inventory. Uh, inventory. We've got torch and a hooded lantern, but actually, let's say they prize that off. They've now got the loot, ship's compass, worth 25 gold. Uh, they also steal the dagger, they can stick that in there, and they take the cartographer's tools. That's why it's useful having it in the, in the journal, because the chances are you're going to have the journal open anyway. You can just drag that stuff straight in there if you want to. What you then need to be careful of is when we look at, let me close that for a second, when we look at the encounters and we look at the Stormwreck Isle and we look at the Compass Rose, uh, we've got the monsters, but we've also got all of these things in here. Um, so if, obviously if I've already given them the cartographer's tools, I would take that out of here. But these are all of those things that they can get. There's the there's the dagger we just looked at. There's the cartographer's tools. There's those gemstones and things like that. Um, I didn't add all the gold on. So I think I would probably do the gold manually. Anyway, it's just a way of doing it. it happens to be the way that I'm doing it at the moment. All right, that's Captain's Quarters. Let's crack on. Uh, next one, Galley. Edit. Got a lot for the galley, which is good. Slap that in. Make it bold. Bosh, nothing here. Easy one. Crew quarters. I think this one's fairly straightforward as well. Lovely jubbly. Lovely jubbly. Why am I saying that? Floorboard stash. That looks a bit more interesting. Except to Misty F. Uh, and then we got some treasure. Right. Put my line in. Get rid of all that formatting. Portrait shows. Blah blah blah. Black haired woman. Da, 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 da. That's fine. Leave a gap. Floorboard stash just to make that stand out. A character who searches. Right, okay, so we've got dice roll. We've got skill. Ability equals Wisdom, skill, equals perception, DC 10. Notice the floorboard in the room is slightly, uh, raised slightly above its neighbours. Uh, character list floorboard triggers a trap. Tiny dart shoots out, making that. Uh, it's attack bonus plus 5. If it hits, it deals uh, 2d, uh, 1d, Deals two. Oh, I see. Yeah, two piercing damage. One d four piercing damage, and the character must succeed on a. Remember this one now. Save. Constitution. Uh, equals eleven. Was it equals or was it just a gap? <laughs> it's forgotten already. Uh, okay. So the save was save. Just, it was just a gap. No equals there. Or take 
poison damage once it's been triggered blah 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 okay good treasure so again make that bold so it stands out sack full of 205 gold okay good right there we go we've got our dc wisdom test wisdom perception check of 10 and constitution uh i might do a i might do a passive perception for that one to be honest unless no i don't know i see you see what mood i'm in at the time see if i'm feeling generous okay mess hall you know sometimes you get the parties who just they never stop and search they're just like oh straight on to the next thing job done off they go you know, so sometimes they miss out on lots of treasure because they just don't really look. Okay, so there's only two more locations, I think, aren't there? Which is um, the lower deck. Map location. And this is C8. Let's chuck it over here. Thank you very much. Get rid of the old one. Get rid of the old one over here as well. Uh, that's C9, which I think is just called the hold. Yep. The hold. Map location, create that. C9, the hold. Lovely jubbly. Shove that down there. Easy peasy. Okay, now let's edit the deck. So we've very nearly finished this one even though we've been doing far more in the journal than perhaps we would need to. But again, if I was writing my own adventure, I'd be wanting to put this level of detail in because it's the only record of what the heck is going on. Um, and as a dungeon master, you can't remember everything. Best will in the world, you just can't. Um, and you start forgetting vital things and you start going with the flow and then you realise that accidentally you've messed up the entire uh, campaign or adventure or... You know, they're, they're doing something that you weren't expecting. And all your hard lay plans just fall apart. Because you weren't prepared properly. Or rather, you weren't, you hadn't uh, got that information on hand. Okay, so get rid of all that. So, the zombie is an obvious threat. Let's chuck him in again. I want my monsters. Get rid of me encounters. Give me the zombie is an obvious threat uh, another undead a ghoul slap the ghoul in there lurks in the aft parts much more cunning than zombies weights blah 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 claw attack etc 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 the water on the floor ranges from about six inches etc it talks about difficult terrain there now that might be a useful place. Again, I don't, I don't need to do it, but... Didn't we have... At reference... Um, and it was just... Whoop. I wonder if that will work. Let's have a look. Uh, at reference, no, it hasn't. Um, and that'll be because difficult terrain isn't. Movement, will that do it? No, so there might not be a reference for that one. Okay, we don't need it. Just thought it might be nice. Let's see. Uh, see, diff difficult terrain, basic rules. Right. Hole in the hold. Bold that. Just going to put another line in there. Uh, da, 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 da. Put another line in. Treasure. Okay, so some of the goods using a crowbar, they could probably open without taking. Da, 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 da. 
Okay, yeah, and then it's got a table of things. We haven't looked at tables. Not going to do it in this video. This video is getting long enough as it is. Um, I'm wondering if we look at tables in the next video. Um, it's only a table with six things on. It's a D6 roll, but we could create that table and see if we can link it to the journal so that we click in the journal and it will roll for us. I don't know. I'm guessing. <laughs> I don't know if that will work. All right. So let's do the last one of these then and then we'll wrap this video up. Okay, so the hold. Copy, paste. I know, you're getting bored of this, aren't you? It's the same old thing. So he's climbing and crawling and suffocating. That's what we like to see. Captain's chest. Now, in the module, it says to read out the journal. Um, but I'm going to do things slightly differently because, I again, I want to share that journal entry with them. So uh, let's, let's do this top bit first. So see Clay McCall is suffocating in the right basic rules as a character's venture. Uh, fortune for them, unless something goes wrong. Da, 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 da. Okay, fine. There's really not much going on here at all, except for the captain's chest. Let's make that bold. Stick it on a new line. Uh, if a character opens the chest, the last eye bubble rushes out. Duh, 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 it raises up. Blah, 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 blah. The chest contains a pouch worth holding 55. It's three turquoise stones. Go on, I bet I did, didn't I? Yeah, of course I did. <laughs> Whee! Worth 10 gold each, as well as a poop, pair of boots of elven kind. Now, they won't be in here because they are a standard SRD item. Boots of elven kind. So let's drag that in. Like that. Uh, the floater packet contains the captain's journal. Okay, so let's just check. So we've got Boots of Elven Kind is there. And again, I can drag that straight into a character sheet or whatever. Got the turquoise stones. So what I actually want to do is go back to my journals and edit this again. Now, in this bit where it says about the captain's journal, I want to drag the captain's journal and stick that in there. So I can click on that. And then I can show players. Bosh. Nice. Okay, so that's that done. Uh, I've got to, actually there's a bit more, a little bit more writing I want to add on to here because it talks about the the talisman. And then it goes on to provide. Oops, provide some information about Orcus, which I, I'm not worried about because, you know, that's there's other information about it. Uh, da, 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 da. Good. Right. Uh, do I need to worry about anything in this? No, I'm happy with that. Okay. So, are you hidden? My harpy wasn't hidden. I must have unhid it at some point. Oh, it might have unhid. Oh, no, the ghoul is unhid. Must have been when we were changing tokens. All right, guys. Well, that's it then. This is kind of ready to go. So we've done the whole of Seagrove Caves. We've done the whole of the Compass Rose. The only one we haven't done is the Clifftop Observatory, which I won't do in this video because it's getting long. Um, but I do want to, uh, in the next video, we'll either do the Clifftop Observatory and get that done. Bosh, all the journals sorted. Or we might play with tables and see if we can get that table um, sorted out for... Uh, I don't want that one. No, nope, stop it. Uh, the table for, was it the lower deck? Um, yeah, roll a d6 and consult, consult the crate contents table. So I think we might do that in the next video, see if we can get that to work. If you got this far, um, thank you. 
<laughs> not sure why uh, remember to like and subscribe and you can watch me do things badly again in the next video cheers guys take care